All right, everybody, let's proceed on to the third and final step in how to add a piece of uh, a new tool into our tooling database. All right, again, we're going to open up a copy of eCarve Pro. We're going to go into create a new file. We'll keep our width and our height at two by two. Thickness, I'll leave it at one inch. I've told you before, I always start off the top of my z-axis. Uh, the top of my material for my z-axis, I'm sorry, and my x and y datum position, I always start in the middle. That's just how I do it up here. And my unit of measurement here in the U.S. is inches. We click OK. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to involve a secondary program because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a door panel bit that I have to show everybody. But I'm going to vectorize the image prior to bringing it in. And I like to use Inkscape, all right? Inkscape is a free open source, free to download, free to use. I'm not trying to sell anybody anything here. Any of you who work entry-level graphic design, you know that Inkscape is comparable to Adobe Illustrator, but in the fact that it's open source and it's free to use. We're going to go in, we're going to open up what we're looking for. I'm looking to open up the bit profile. I'm just going to click open. I'll click OK. I will hold down my control key and zoom out on my mouse wheel. What we're going to do, let me zoom back in a little. We're going to basically take this PNG or this raster image here and we're going to convert it into a vectorized image. Excuse me, a vectorized image, either a PDF or an EPS. All right, we're going to go trace bitmap. Under your path, click on trace bitmap. We're going to make sure our brightness cutoff is clicked. This is strictly a black and white black and white image. I'm not worried about edge detection or color quantumization, and I'm going to leave it at the factory setting here of 0.450. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to close it. I will come down here. I am going to drag in this router bit profile to one of my uh, one of my raised door panel bits. And what we'll do, and we're going to show you real quick as to why we've done this. Holding down my control key on my keyboard, I will zoom in. As we zoom in, we can see our new vectorized line is nice and crisp and clear. The one that we just copied, though, your raster image is starting to blur and get dull but there's no loss of quality this is why guys we use vectorized imagery okay so I'll come up I'll highlight the one we just copied which is this one here we'll click delete and this one well we would come up we would file save as and then in here you can choose to name it and then what you want to assign it. Now I've already done this. I assigned it as a PDF and there it is. Okay, we're not going to save this, but we're going to show you why in a minute we did this. Yes, you can also trace this bitmap within your vCarve Pro software, but again, I've told you time and time again, I really enjoy the capabilities of Inkscape and I think that it's uh, as far as doing imagery conversion into vectorized Images, I think that uh, Inkscape personally does a better job than what you can even do inside vCarve Pro. Uh, we're going to close this without saving because we already have it. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm also going to pull up an image of the, uh, the piece again. So, we're going to hang on and we'll be right back with that. All right. Let's now go and let's import that image that we just vectorized which will be right here there's our PDF you can uh, you can bring this in this way click open you can also on another screen drag it in if you choose okay first thing we're gonna do let's highlight him I need to resize him down we know that his width it's gonna roughly be 1.5 we're gonna click apply I'll go back, we'll show you how we did that again. I went up to the import, 
clicked on my bit profile, clicked open, brought him in. All right. We'll move him right here. Now, I'm going to look at the overall dimensions. He has a maximum cutting width of 1.5 inches and a maximum cutting depth of 0.5 inches. So one and a half by half inch. Let's come over here to create vectors. Let's draw a rectangle. Let's get it in the box. And let's go 1.5 by 0.5. I'm going to click apply. Great. Now what we have is we have the actual dimension, we have the actual box with the dimension of our outside to outside and our overall depth. Now we're going to break this down. We need to make this work and the only way we're going to make this work is to take it apart. So we see we right now we have a double line here. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Edit Objects, Node Editing. I'll come into this very bottom interior line. I'll click on him. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. I only need this one exterior edge. I'm going to highlight him again. Now we know that we need this profile. All right. We're going to right click and we're going to delete the span here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to delete my span here. I will come over to Edit Objects, Selection Mode. I'm going to highlight him. I'm going to come down to Transform Objects, Set Selected Object Size. Now I know in my reading right here, he's not going to be more than 1.5 inches in width. 1.5. Well, lo and behold, with my link X and Y, checked, it reconfigured me to the exact height that I wanted. Awesome. I'm going to click Apply. I'm going to click Close. Edit Object Selection Mode. I'm going to highlight him again. I'm going to come down to Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects, and I'm going to drop him dead center. Let's close him. And let's zoom in on this. Now, I'm going to highlight this piece that we've just done and we've resized. I'm going to come into Transform Objects, Align Selected Object Size, and I'm going to center him. He is centered. Okay. I'm going to highlight the box. I'm going to also come in, Transform Objects, Align Selected Object, and I see that I have a perfect fit. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the box, I'll highlight it again, I'll hit delete. I'm going to come up here. I now know that I have all my punitive information and the last thing that I want to do is I want to check on this right here. I want to check and make sure that I actually have a 30 degree reading. How exactly do we do that? Well, let's take and let's zoom selected. We highlight him. We're going to zoom the selected. I am going to come into Add Dimensions to a Two Dimensional Drawing. I want to know what the angle of this is. So I'm going to come in here, down at the bottom. I'm going to click on him. I'm going to pull him out. And then up to here. Lo and behold, folks, there's my 30 degrees. That's exactly what I needed here. Well, guess what? We have now got our template made. We've got our vectorized profile made for this particular raised door panel bit. So now, let's come in here. Highlight your degree. Now that you know you do, in fact, have 30 degrees, delete him. Let's come over to view control here, pan view. Edit Object Selection Mode, and let's highlight him up 
hit delete. All right. Now we know that when we click on him and we double check him one last time for object size, I am 1.5 by 0.5. Okay. We're going to close him out. One thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to edit objects, node editing. One thing I want to do, I want to come to my center node. I'm going to right click. I'm going to insert a point. I'm going to take this here. Right click. I'm going to delete this span. This is highlighted here. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. There is the profile that we have that we're going to need to create this brand new tool with inside of our tool database. All right, let's come up to Tool Pass. Let's click on our little pin. Let's pin it. We're going to come into Display Tool Base Data. Before we click on that, let's highlight this vector under Edit Objects Selection Mode. He's lit up. We're going to come into our Tooling Database. I am going to come down to New. The type of tool that we're putting in is a forming tool. Now remember this, folks. Any one of these that you click on will not work other than the forming tool. There's plenty of, these are all, to me, they're all pre-programmed when, within the WinCNC controller at the machine. So the only thing that's going to work when you go to enter your own tool in vCarve Pro anyways, I have found, is your forming tool. Now we can see right here, it's laid everything out. It is saying that is 1.5.053. I'm not too concerned with that. My pass depth on this, well, I would probably start that out at somewhere around a quarter of an inch in my particular piece of equipment. My step over, I'm not quite sure. This is something that uh, all new bits that I, I personally go out and get, I, I practice with them in MDF. My spindle speed, I would start out at 12,000. My feed rate, I would probably start out at about 100 point. And my plunge rate, I do it about 30.0. I would click apply. Now, the other thing you could do is you could go up in here. It's a forming tool. It's a 1.5. And we could call this door panel. Under notes, if we want, we could put in that it has a 30 degree pitch. You know, feel free to label these however you want. Click apply guys. Click OK. Now if we were to come back up in again to our display tool based data, we can see that right here is our form tool. There's the note that we have made on it that it is a 1.5 inch. You can also change the name of this to, uh, we could go raised panel, raised panel door. And we know that it's for a 1.5 inch uh, door panel. It is in fact a forming tool and it has a 30 degree pitch to it. All right. From there you can take and you could, you could drop that maybe into your specialist. You can put it wherever you choose to. You could even go out and you could open up a, uh, a new group if you wanted. And you could call your new group uh, raised panel door bits. And you can click uh, Apply and OK. You go back into your tooling database, and there you see you have raised panel uh, door bits. And you could then turn around and put those specialty bits in there. OK? I will, however, recommend again that it is worth your effort to build a good relationship with a supplier who can already provide you with these. When you get into the OGs and some of the other bits, they can get extremely complicated. To be able to download or import a DXF file of a pre-drawn profile, 
uh, for a bit. Saves you a lot of time, a lot of headaches, and any good manufacturer is going to have those readily available for you to download, okay? So I hope this helped as always, guys. And uh, again, thank you so much for your, uh, for your support, for following us, for subscribing to us. We appreciate each and every one of you very, very much. And uh, please go off. Have a nice, safe week. We've got a, we've got a great weekend coming up. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you're a sporting fanatic and you know, you'll get to catch the, uh, the Super Bowl this weekend. If not, maybe you're an outdoor enthusiast. I'm going to combine the two myself and go out and get a little ice fishing in, I hope, and then maybe catch the game Sunday night. But I want to wish you all the best, you and yours. And, uh, guys, please have a safe week. And, uh, We'll catch you Wednesday for the midweek shout-out. All right, everybody. Be careful, be good, and be safe. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.